Hi, and welcome to lesson 10.3, which is all about using statistical measures to compare populations. Compare differences in centers of variability. So you can recall that the mean absolute deviation, or MAD, of a data uh, of, a, of a data set. First find the mean of the data, then you take the absolute value of the differences between the mean and each data point. This is all back in sixth grade here. Finally, take the mean of those absolute values. So I'm going to review that process. It's a pretty long process. The tables show the number of minutes per day students in class spend exercising versus playing video games. So what is the difference of the means as a multiple of the mean absolute deviations. This is this is a really crazy question. I'm going to try to break it down carefully. First, we have to find the mean of the data, which is the average of each data set. Then we're going to find the mean absolute deviation. And you, you might have forgotten from sixth grade, but that's going to be covered in here as well. And then we're going to talk about how it's a uh, the difference of the means is a multiple of the mean absolute deviation. So first, mean. The mean of this. So all this data, you have to add them up and divide by how many numbers you have. So when you add these up, you get 204, and there are 12 numbers. So you divide it up, and the average is 17. Now, the mean absolute deviation means you have to find the distance from each data point to the mean. So that distance means you have to subtract 17 minus 0. That distance is 17. The distance from 17 to 7, that is 10. What they're doing here is they're taking the absolute value of each. So it doesn't matter if, you, if the 17 comes first or the 0 comes first. You'll end up with a positive number. That's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to make sure that if you did, s yeah, 7 minus 17 is a negative number, but we don't want the negative number. Uh, we want the positive number. And so what you do is 18, uh, what's oh, 7 here, 7 here, uh, 18 minus the average is 1. So you take the distance from each of these and you sub subtract them all from the mean. That's what all is done here. Now, the mean absolute deviation is the average of all those green numbers, all those distances. And that's what they did here. And when you divide it by 12, that means the mean absolute deviation is 9. That means the average distance all of these numbers are from the average is 9. Typically, they're 9 points away or 9 minutes away from the average, which was 17. And that tells you about the spread of the data. But next, we're going to do the same process, but with this. So starts with 13, ends with 19. So over here, starts with 13, ends with 19. So all those numbers, add them up, divide by 12, because there are 12 numbers. And the average is 29.2. And then we take the distance from each of these, 13. What is that distance to the average? 29.2, that's 16.2. So all of these are all of those distances from the data points to the average. And then we average those, and we have 107 point, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. The, we add them up, divide by 12, and that average is nine as well. So all of these have a distance, have average, all of these data points have an average distance of nine minutes from the mean. Okay, so now we're gonna attack this what is the difference of the means? What's the difference of the means? Okay, the difference of the means, the first one was 29.2 and the other one was 17. So the first mean, you see here's to the 29.2, that, that was one of the means, and the other mean was 17. So what's the difference of the means? The difference of the means is 12.2, you subtract them. Now, what's the difference of the means as a multiple of the mean absolute deviation. So we take this difference of the means and we divide it by the mean absolute deviation, which for both of them was nine, and we get 1.36. That is our answer. So the means of the two different data sets differ by about 1.4 times the variability of the two data sets. Whew, that was a lot. So now we have this your turn question related to our example. The high 
jumps in inches of the students on two intramural track and field teams are shown below. What is the difference of the means as a multiple of the mean absolute deviations? So what we're going to break, do is break this down. What is the difference of the means? So let's get the means first. The mean of this data, add them up and divide by how many you have, is 67. The mean of this data, add them up and how many numbers you by and divide by how many numbers you have is about 52.1. So I subtracted 67 and 52.1. So the difference in the means is 14.9. And how is that? Uh, what is the difference in the means as a multiple of the mean absolute deviations? Well, I now have to know what the mean absolute deviations are of each of these. So like was done in the example, the mean absolute deviation of this is about 14.2. Lots of calculations. I'll show you that right here. So to get 14.2, you got to do all of this. So it's right here where we have... Uh, 52.1 is the average, and then the mean absolute deviation, you have to do all this work here to get, uh, and then you have to take the, the mean of all of these numbers here to get 14.1. And then I took the, I, I also have the mean absolute deviation of the other set of data. So one of them, uh, so actually this one was 14.1 and this was 14.2. So I decided to use 14.1 in my final calculation. So the difference of the means as a multiple of the mean absolute deviations, difference in the means in the numerator, multiple uh, uh, the mean absolute deviations in the denominator, you divide that, you get about 1.1. So 1.1 is the difference of the means, and it's about 1.1 times the mad. So yeah, that, that's what this means. The, the difference of the means is about 1.1 times the mean absolute deviation. Okay, next, using multiple samples to compare populations. Many different random samples are possible for any given population, and their measures of center can vary. Using multiple samples can give us an idea of how reliable any inferences or predictions uh, we make are. So here are a group of about 250 students in grade seven and about 250 students in grade 11, and they're asked how many hours do you volunteer per month? Responses from one random sample of 10 students in grade seven and one random sample of 10 students in grade 11 are summarized in the box plots here. So this is uh, two random sample size, uh, two random samples of size 10. Okay, so one, si uh, one sample size and two samples, uh, the second sample size. How can we tell if grade 11 students do more volunteer work? Well. As we look at this here, the median is higher for grade 11 students, all right? Okay, but there is a great deal of variation. So these, there's a lot of variation here uh, going on. So uh, to make an inference for the entire population, it's helpful to consider how the medians vary among multiple samples. So we need more data than just one uh, sample size of 10 and another sample size of 10. What we gotta do is we need, uh, well, more data, and so we have 10 random sample sizes of 10. And so we have, uh, now we have more data of these two populations. And as we look at more data from each, more random sample, uh, more random samples, we see the, uh, very, the medians vary less than the actual data, okay? And half of the seventh, uh, half of the grade seven medians are within one hour of nine. Okay, so half of them are in one hour of nine. So this entire half of the data right here is in one, within one hour. So that's pretty tight right there. Half of the grade 11 medians are within one or two hours of 11. So within one or two hours of 11. So half the data is within uh, one or two hours of 11. And so although the distributions overlap, they do overlap just a, yeah, they do a, a bit here, so this part here overlaps right here. That part overlaps. Uh, this is fairly convincing evidence that the grade 11 students volunteer more than the grade 7 students. And you can just see that visually here. Just visually, this right here is more than that. So using this information, we have a your turn question. The box plots show the variation in the means of 
10 different random samples for the groups in the example. Why did these data give less convincing evidence that grade 11 students volunteer more? So we're not as sure that grade 11 students uh, volunteer more. Well, as we look at this here, there's a lot of overlap here. There's much more overlap between the two distributions. So that's what gives us some uh, convincing evidence. And there you go. That's what you have to know about all of our mean absolute deviation and especially using statistical measures to compare our populations.